Hello, welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. I've uh, got Chris Stark with me uh, as usual, and uh, the super sub, which is. Uh, <laughs> It's getting a few appearances. That, though, yes, the notorious <laughs> SID is back. Steve um, said, "Well, are you enjoying your sort of appearances on the podcast so far?" How or? can you not? There's microphone yeah. stories. Well, you know we've what? got we to explain how it. it's changed. Yeah, Pete, do you want to get into this? Because because this is a different situation. Yeah, right, different situation. Well, I mean, Steve's come in and like he must feel like he's joined Man United, but it's not always been like this. <laughs> Well, it's, like, it's like when a it's like Wrexham or something, you know, it's like Wrexham, isn't it? It's like when Chelsea, yeah, Chelsea were training at Har- Harlington, you know, it's all like Cobham now. And, you know, like, look, this is, we've upgraded big time yeah. here. Well, we're now in a Brewdog pub. And there's a bowling alley next to us. I mean, I just entered the the pod through a slide. Yeah. Which is, yeah, do you know what I'm like with slides, Chris? Well, it's insane. I was talking <laughs> to Steve just, uh, just out, out there. Next thing, you just hear the noise of someone going down the slide. It's like a big curly slide. Crouchy fucking loves the slide. And uh, comes down, all smiles and everything. <laughs> loved it. Like, Absolutely loved it. Do you know what's so funny about that? When I came in, I saw you and I thought, please don't, please don't see me. Please don't see me. And I was laughing so much to myself. I was being, I can't even do this. I was laughing so much. Came down the slide. No one really cared, did they? But I did. No, we Bad loved it. Me. See, I, was, I got here about 20 minutes earlier than you and no one was really here. These boys were setting up and I was like, it's, too, it's too early to go down oh, the slide. Too it's too early. So I left you to do it. <laughs> See, when I, when I walked in, I was so bemused by the whole place. The scale of it is nuts. Yeah. Um, and I was, I couldn't really understand what was going on. We're doing the podcast from in here. I was so bemused by it all that I completely ignored Steve. Just walked straight up to the lads setting up. It's absolutely blown our minds. Yeah, yeah. This is unreal. It's unreal, as we yeah. say. Giving us wings here. Oh, We've not paid a penny for these. Well, I should hope so. And the beers. Well, this is all alien to us, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest podcasts in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we've never, we're only on a free beer. We've never, we've never really <laughs> thought of moving. <laughs> no, I, I did say, are, are we sure? Because... I'd Do you feel of, like a brand which has come in? I'd gone f- fond of the other pub, but the thing is with it, it was so far away from the toilets. Mm. And so yeah. we floated the idea of going to a pub where the toilets were a bit closer. That was where it started. Mm. And then next thing I know, we're, we're in a place with a slide and a bowling alley. And um, So I'm right in saying this is one of the largest pubs in Europe. Largest uh, in the UK? Largest okay. pub in, ah, you know, right. potato, potato. <laughs> <laughs> you say tomato. What is mad, right? We're doing the podcast and we're in a sort of booth at the back. Um, no one really knows that we're here yet. Actually, it's not too busy because it's quite early on in the day. But I'm thinking when we normally do the podcast, it can be rammed outside. And this has got real Amsterdam vibes to it. It's kind of got a glass frontage to this room <laughs> and then a curtain at the front. But when the curtain is revealed, we're in here just podcasting uh, away. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a mad surprise for everyone out there. It's a strange scenario, isn't it? You saw, I mean, you call it like the red light district in, uh, in Holland. It's dude. just, I do think it's got that sort of, it's got I might vibe. go dance in the window for a little bit. Maybe if people pay enough money, we'd put back the curtains. Quick robot peep oh. show. <laughs> call me. Call me. <laughs> It does have that vibe, I th- but I do wonder. Robot if, people I think we, I yeah. think we've got to make it a tradition as well. That obviously where where we are is literally based right outside this slide. Yeah, that it's got to be a tradition that you got to come down the slide. You got to come down there. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's a done deal. That's good. That's if, done you, deal. if you know yeah. London, we're um, uh, we're recording this in uh, Brewdog Waterloo, What's and they are looking after us, so we want to give them a good shout out and. Um, if you happen to come through here, you might well see us in the back there. If you see the curtains closed, just a little tap on the window and Crouch, you might reveal us to you. <laughs> if you see a curtain closed, if you, if you tap on the window and just say, um, I'm parched, <laughs> yeah. you can come in and have a beer. <laughs> and I think we can only go get away with doing this podcast here as long as there isn't yeah. sort of crowd problems. Or the, yeah, so like that, that. please behave yourself if you are yeah. in there because we quite like it here now. All right. Well, let's crack on with today's episode. Um, Really, really exciting one today. We've got a very special guest. Really special guest. I mean, it's one of those, you know, like, we're doing this podcast, you forget that lots of people listen. And lots of people, we end up speaking to people that you never thought you'd speak to, you know? And I think the fella on today, it's that kind of vibe. I mean, he's a, yeah. he's a Hollywood film star in him. It's, it's, it's a big, big deal. Yeah. And obviously, we're a football podcast, so it's great to chat football with him. He's an Arsenal fan. It's Idris Elba. We've got him on the podcast. <laughs> Um, he's got a new uh, TV series out on Apple TV. It's called Hijack. Uh, we recorded this. What you're about to hear, we recorded in the week, and I'm so excited for you guys to hear it. Uh, it goes to all sorts of weird places, from 
how uh, the notorious <laughs> SID would deal with <laughs> hijacking. <laughs> the worst thing is he's called <laughs> notorious now. <laughs> to 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 a rap battle uh, mm. that that happens at one point, mm. and lots of chat, mm. various things. Our oh, producer uh, shit in the toilet before the interview. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we get into a lot of yeah. a lot of football here. This is a guy who has managed one of the teams at Soccer Aid. Mm. Arsene Wenger was his assistant. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. So, what a guy. So, as always with this podcast, we'll get into a load of your messages. We'll do that towards the end as well. Crouchy, should we get into this? Let's get into it. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Mr. Idris Elba. Hello, welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. I've got uh, Chris Stark with me, but no Statman Dave today. So, we got got uh, Statman Steve again. Steve Sidwell's with us. You've got to leave the Statman Steve out. <laughs> no, 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 Notorious, that, isn't it? No, notorious SID. <laughs> um, I, let me just introduce the main man as yeah. well, Mr. Idris Elba's with us as well yeah, today. Yeah, nice, nice. I am no Statman. Just put that out there. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's kind of doors. <laughs> it's why we've got Steve here. Um, he is the notorious SID. Do you want to explain why? Uh, Definitely the, doesn't want to explain the that. The notorious but. SID. Explain this to Idris Elba. So uh, it goes back to... Um, the party we had, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, we said on the previous uh, previous episode where I, I rapped, basically. Oh. Um, went, went notorious, B.I.G. style, uh, juicy, and then just, yeah, left left the crowd in awe. Basically. It was my, surprise. My, wow. It was my wife's my wife's birthday, and no one knew he had this talent in the locker. All of a sudden, like, he goes, well, I've got this in the locker. I said, okay, go. And belted it out. And you know, you know Serge from Kasabian? Yeah, no, Serge. of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he was there. He was like, I've never seen him like it. Is yeah. the, the rapping was off the off the scale. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was. Uh, it's not one of my fortes, but it just comes out every now and again. So, um, yeah, I've seen obviously your your, uh, your bit on your your duppy grime and stuff. Yeah, and I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen you you drop some drop some <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> Are we so, rap battling? No, 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 no. Have we moved? Listen, <laughs> listen we're, we're not, we're not going to rap battle, but, but one of these Herberts from behind the uh, from behind the production did say to me yesterday, look, do you want to have a, a rap battle with Idris? Yeah. So I was like, listen. He hasn't agreed to this, though. <laughs> I was like, look, um, uh, this, he's got lyrics for days, yeah. but um, what I would do is I'll jot down some notes. Yeah. Well, so, um, well, have you really? I've got a little rap on me. <laughs> You're joking! I've got a little rap, rap on me. I didn't even know about this. That. This, this is, I promise you. This is, it is, free, is it a freestyle no, or have this, you written no, it? No, no, no. I've, okay. I've had to write it because... Yeah. Um, notorious. Have you made this notorious. for Notorious. If it's getting Idris. called Notorious this now. Is, this is Notorious. This is. So wow. literally, Ross from, uh, Ross from behind the cameras here, he literally uh, uh, messaged me yesterday and said, look, do you want to have a rap battle? And I was like, look, I can't rap battle against Ugh. Big Eye Dizzle because he'll just <laughs> see me off to sleep. I like so uh, I said, look, give me half an hour. I'll come up with some lyrics. Uh -oh. so, Have uh, you, you really done this? Geez, I've really? done this. Oh, right. I've done right, so this. Do, do you need music? music? No, yeah, no, sure. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going acapella. Here? I was going to do a beat. I was going yeah, yeah. to I'm going, I'm going acapella. Uh, no, oh, are yeah. you yeah. saying you're turning down Idris uh, he said he's turning down. Right. Yes, I, want, I, want, I want you to feel. I want you to feel the words. I want you to feel oh, the oh, lyrics. Oh, 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 this is gonna be good. <laughs> so this this is off the bat as well. No one knows I've done this. No one literally knows I've done this. Oh are you ready? <laughs> Notorious SID. Here we go. Here, Here we, we go. go. It's rhyme time. That time for Chelsea's number nine. Drop the mic, Lowry, get on the dirty grime. Idris, Crouchy, Starkey, Notorious SID, Arsenal, Tottenham, and the famous CFC. Grab your partner, Luther J. Defoe. Shut the front door, it's El Parcio. <laughs> it's PC's pod stories to tell. Hit me on the page of Kingpin, string a bell. Ooh. Crouchy, Crouchy Enfield with the Bicey. Big Eye Dizzle OBE with the Baffer the Nominee. <laughs> <laughs> There. So get your five aside, sack of storm, Santan. Big guns don't matter because I've got my main man. <laughs> I'm dropping in bars more than George Best. Getting nice and early because I'm down at Crouch Fest. Yeah. <laughs> Notorious. Yo. That is, what a start. That's 11 out of 10. 11 out of 10 for that one. <laughs> Off the bat. Off the bat. Oh, wow. we, we also need to apologise as well because um, oh. we're in a hotel room where we're <laughs> interviewing you and you're on the podcast today, Idris. Um, but one of our team um, did have a shit uh, just before you came in. 
and I had to point out that's not what's really done in these situations. Wow. Um, but that will hopefully explain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, you had a pony in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you go in there, lock the door, and just pretend he was having a piss? No, I just walked in. I blew him up straight away. Oh. Yeah. Come to, that's how we. That's how we set the tone on this right. pod. But no, no, po ponies shit. in a, t a hotel room like this is a good one because yeah. Yeah, there's a nice toilet, so yeah, clean. <laughs> be all right. Yeah, you yeah. might. You yeah. might as well. Yeah. All right. Well, well welcome to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just, apologies for the way this has started, but uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, great. We've well, set the tone. Uh, uh, yeah, but you've got so you've got series out at the minute. Um, but obviously, this is a we'll get into that. But this is a, obviously a football podcast. You're a big Arsenal Arsenal fan. Yeah? I am. Yeah. So am. how that how that started? Uh, it's funny because my dad is a Man United fan. Yeah, yeah. It's FA Cup today. Yeah. Man City, Man United, and then my dad. And I had this healthy rivalry in our household the whole time because I've always been an Arsenal fan as long as, as, long as I can remember. Um, and my dad's always been a Manchester United supporter. So it was weird. But, but it happened when I was like probably 12 years old. I moved from Hackney to Cannon Town. And uh, Cannon Town is right near West Ham. It's mm. not far. Yeah. And so on West Ham days, you know, all the... The, the lads would get on the bus outside our school and head up to West Ham. Mm. And it was a lot of ICF back then. And the ICF um, in, uh, International f yeah. Firm, mm. whatever they're called. Yeah, it's a city firm. It's it's a city firm. Yeah. Like racist, yeah. wankers really. And they just used to terrorise us at school. And I remember I had an Arsenal shirt given to me somewhere and I wore an Arsenal shirt and they would scream at me and shout mm. at me and I just felt really powerful in it. I was like, yeah, Love I was him. a big, I was a big kid for twelve, so I could hold me on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. my my Arsenal shirt became my sort of like, you know what I mean, superhero. Yeah, yeah. Because in a sea of like, you know, purple and whatever color, mm. burgundy and blue, you know, there was my shirt on the bus home. Love that. Yeah, I, I think what's wicked as well is is when you're a football fan and then you get to. Uh, sort of work with or meet the legends that you grew up watching. Mm. Uh, you did Soccer Aid, didn't you? I did, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And was Arsene Wenger one of the managers for yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, That must have been special. Yeah. He was my assistant coach. He was your <laughs> assistant? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Wenger's assistant. Yeah, right? you know, if you, <laughs> there's this meme with me and Arsene Wenger staying, watching the uh, watching the game and we've both got our arms crossed and we're very serious and, and it was on Twitter and, and someone was like, does Idris Elba and Arsene Wenger think this is the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, people take it serious, though. Don't Very they? serious. Yeah. People take that serious. But yeah, it was nice meeting him. He's a yeah. really lovely guy. Mm. Uh, he's, he's a fan of my work as well. So, and, and he was. I, I'd, I'd, I'd seen him obviously at um, 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 Highbury a few times. Mm. Uh, and an Emirates, of course. Yeah. But what about the power dynamic? So, when he's your assistant coach, did you dare sort of? overrule him or tell him what to do how did it work <laughs> do you know how it worked is that he told everyone to do and i just nodded <laughs> uh, like, yes i was but i remember like because he wanted to make a substitution halfway through the game and i was like no and he was like why <laughs> i was like and i can't remember who the player was but as they were doing stellar work at the back and they were getting back and they had fresh legs but he because there was a like you had to give people a fair swap yeah, yeah, yeah. and a fair go but i was like no you can't take him off <laughs> And I saw him the other day at the, I was telling you about the Premier League, you know, he got inducted into the Hall of Fame and I was there and he reminded me then, he was like, he's the only actor that's told me what to do. <laughs> was, terrible accent, but he was like, incredible. he remembered that I told him, no, you can't bring her off. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so you, you talked about obviously going to school, like Canning Town, mm. and like, how, how did you get into, into acting? From from there, from there, I went to a boys' school called Trinity Boys. It's not there anymore. It's now called Cumberland, but the building's there. And again, I, I moved from Hackney to Cannon Town. Hackney's a very diverse culture. Mm -hmm. Cannon Town was just like not. And so I just I got to school. Um, I was a big lad. It's a boys' school. Everyone wanted to fight me or race me or, mm -hmm. or wanted me on their side. I played a lot of football. I loved it, but there was a drama teacher called Miss McPhee. We bonded and, and, and drama was one of these just, it was just the, 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 the sort of classroom that I didn't have to fight or challenge everyone. I just loved drama. Mm. And she'd always say, oh, Idris, who, you know, you, you show up, you show the boys what to do and I'd get up and just do it. You know, if it was an improvisation, usually she would be like, oh, um, tell us what it would look like if you were a fried egg. Uh, okay, miss, so I'd get on the floor and be <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, now that's acting. 
Anyway, before you know it, before you know it, she just really loved me and encouraged me to sort of like get into it. So I was 12. By the time I was 15, she was like, I really think you should take this into a career. And at that junction, you know, I, I liked school, but I was not an academic. You know, I think I passed with maybe, you know, an A in that in drama, maybe a B in biology, you know, the D in, in maths. You know what I mean? I wasn't yeah. like academic, yeah. but ultimately... She was like, if you really want to take acting seriously, I can help you. And she did. And she got me into a few acting programs outside of that. And that's how I, that's how I Yeah, so, so it's sort of, that was the point you felt where it was, it was like you were deciding to go with it. A bit like you boys. There must have been a point where you have to kind of go, okay, well, I'm going to sort of leave the school system a bit yeah. more and, and commit. Yeah. yeah. Also, obviously, for us, it was a natural a natural progression, a natural ability. So was that the same with you? Like, like your personality was just a natural act, and then you had to yeah. enhance, yeah, and, uh, enhanced out. I think also because I'm, I'm an only child, right? And you've got, you know, you know, you just got a, a only child. You, you your imagination's yeah. wild. You're always making yeah. up stuff yourself. You know what I mean? And like, um, I got West African parents, pretty stri strict, and it was like. BC not heard, you know what I mean? So I spent a lot of time making up stuff and blah, blah, blah. Before you knew it, when I was in school doing drama, I realized I had this talent to just make believe and, mm. you know, just step into that, you know? Um, you guys started football when you were young, right? Right, yeah. young. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, like, but I think, like, certainly from the schools that maybe we were from, it's like, it's quite, it's quite common, isn't it, for, yeah. for players to go into football. That's why, for me, it's like acting from that kind of environment, it's, it feels like yeah. a, like a it, was, issue, it was a weird yeah, you know? one. It was a complete yeah. weird one. Yeah. I mean, Trinity Boys was good at basketball. I played basketball, football, cricket, hockey, rugby, judo. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was all right at all of it. Do you know mm. what I mean? And, and, but drama was a bit of a, mm. a left field for me. And I well, I don't, I don't know if you've seen some of my adverts, like my performances are fantastic in those. Um, <laughs> and I, but I was never natural funny. at school, you know, I've, I've blossomed as I've gone on. You know? <laughs> I think a film is the last funny. one for oh, you yeah, to tick on, off. You've got to be one. Next on the box. But, but do you know, like, people talk about you, because uh, when I was going up to school, like, growing up, and th there weren't that many tall footballers. Mm. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And people talk about you as being like a symbol of... Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the flagship for the, the lanky flagship. man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, there's not many of us out there doing it. So, uh, no, I do, oh, obviously, like, king here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like a lot of, a lot of you know, skinny, tall fellas come up to me and, you know, you're an inspiration, inspiration. To, to, to a few yeah. of us. Same with know? the gingers with <laughs> Steve. Uh, We're a dying breed, actually. And now the, the rappers. Big, yeah, and now the ginger rules. rappers yeah. as well. There's not me ginger rappers out there. <laughs> Notorious SIG. <laughs> Notorious SI Ginge. Can we talk about footballers um, being actors, though? I don't know where you stand on it, Idris, because uh, are, you, are you actually a half-decent footballer? I can play, yeah. Uh, um, I, but I, I wouldn't say I would, uh, like, anywhere near, you know, pro, semi-pro, mm. anything like that. But if I, I love a game, I love a pickup game or whatever I run about. Personally, though, I think watching like Cantona or, yeah. you know, Vinny act, you know what I mean? I love it. Mm. I love it. Why not? Yeah. Seeing Crashy. Because, you know, it's all about personality. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day. So it's like you mm. happen to have a skill set, which is football. And that's amazing. But also you put you in front of the camera. You're not ugly and you can, you, mm. you're funny. Well, <laughs> you're funny. You know, <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking. <laughs> funny looking. You know what I found? It's like inhibitions, isn't it? You know, but like obviously for you, obviously at film must be hundreds of people, like thousands of people, you know, big yeah. cat. How do you then, you know, lose those inhibitions? Like for me, for me, listen, I'm, I'm only joking, you know, but I, it, I have done things where I've had cameras in front of me and then it's like, just because I kicked a ball around, you're supposed to, you know, lower your lines or, you know, yeah. do, do, and, and do, do, like go and perform. And you're like, mm. well, no, I didn't. I didn't, I'm not used to this. Yeah, so I'm yeah, like, yeah. playing football, it's yeah. what, what we did. Yeah. And I've trained all my life to be there. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, it's because you've done that football. Yeah. That you, like even this, you know, you get a camera in front of you, it's like, right, you go and perform. They just yeah. assume. They yeah, just they assume, assume you know. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. haven't had you know. the years of, of like, That's what I mean, yes. Yeah, so obviously you've trained yeah. for it all your life, mm. right? So, yeah. so how do you lose those inhibitions, you know, to, to go on a film and just be a different character? Yeah, it's weird because I don't know what the science is. I don't know w what it is. I often ask myself, because like I, I, I DJ right, and I and I, and, and I DJ in front of five thousand people, and I get so nervous before I get on. And then once oh. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. But yeah. I can't tell what makes my set going to be good. I just know that once I'm in it, I'm in it. Yeah. And it feels like that with acting. I remember that one time it was a soccer raid, but not the last soccer raid. It was um, 
it, it was a few years back and I got pl- asked to play on the England squad and it was amazing. I was like, oh man, I'm going to play. And I can play, right? Mm. But they put me in the back and I was like a right wing, uh, right defence or whatever. Mm. And I, f- I kept thinking, oh, I'm not touching the ball much. And you know, as soon as I came over, I was like, it's yourself a loofah. And I was like, yeah. And I'm going, like, I'm going to have a scoring moment and I know what my celebration is going to look like. So I decided I'm going to run up there and, and Ian Wright was on my team and, he, and um, Stan Collymore, who's mouthy. Anyway, I love you, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> but Stan's like, Idris, what are you doing? Come over here, you're meant to be there, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, fuck this, I'm going to run up there. And I've got the ball and I see Wrighty doing a thing and I'm like, oh, this is magic. And I'm running with the ball now, and I see him and I ping it and it goes straight to him. And I'm going, oh, I know what i got to do. I run towards the six board boots now. I'm going, mm, and Wrighty's doing it and he flings it back to me. It is sweet. It's the moment. It's the moment. <laughs> I was like, I see it. I hit it and it fucking pinged. <laughs> <laughs> And it was live on TV. <laughs> and my dad saw it as well. He goes, what is going on? But it pinged. And, then, and that's why I remember thinking, you know what? Yeah. Talent. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. footballers, like, I didn't hold my call. Mm. In that junction, well, all I had to do was just slot it in and I would have walked, mm. pulled my shirt over my head and did the whole Jesus arms. Mm. I, did, I just fucking <laughs> fucked it completely. That's the best thing about acting, though, is like, obviously, when you play, it's live, it's there. If you, you don't mean to have a bad game, but sometimes you do, but with when you're in, on, on set, if you, if you nail something, you nail it, you go, brilliant. But if you don't, you can go, Joe, you know I can do that better. I do it better, yeah, yeah, yeah. But with football, I guess, or anything, you know, I, I think your point about inhibitions is, is about, you know, once you get into the, once you get past the idea of looking like a failure and not feeling bad about that, then it's all right to just mm-hmm. mess up. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And then you lose your inhibitions because mm. you're not worried about failing yeah. are you thinking of getting into films then no 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 not at all no but um come on no, go on no, well listen if you want to you want to get me involved no. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna say no but <laughs> no, but it starts you've got to have an extra role at the start haven't you you just got to be got to do it slowly i think you've got to have a little background role walk on in the, you know something yeah, something like yeah. in the in the background of the like the queen vic in eastenders yeah, right? yeah, background yeah. Ones. well yeah have you You're, seen i don't know you know arsenal fan right you know manu petit yeah have you seen him in the bill He's, he's in the bill. He's in the bill. No, no, that's not Wait. right. Wait. <laughs> so I knew you were going to say that. The bill's I'm still li- going. I'm lining this up. This has been, this has been, no, this is a long, this oh, is a long time ago. 10, 15 years ago, right? Emmanuel Petit. Yeah, but after his football career. One of the most wooden, I want you to judge his, you know, he's still playing. He was at Arsenal. <laughs> what? No, I don't he remember He was in this. the bill. I don't remember this. The, the, the bill, you yeah. Shot, the, bill, sure the bill, you've got him wrong. Right. Yeah. I'm telling you, right, Emmanuel, watch this. I want you to judge his performance in this, if you don't mind. Right. Yeah. You see that, everyone? Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. No, you are. Pleased to meet you. This is Jean Morrison, my first ever gen. Really nice to meet you. Hi. Look, this is really good easy to come down, you know? I can't believe it. I never thought you'd show up for a minute. How is she? What is her name? Laura? <laughs> yeah, it's Laura. Well, she's still uh, unconscious, I'm afraid, but uh, they're optimistic. Well, you know what doctors are like in here. They're always optimistic. You put them in with the Yisra? Yeah. Yeah, we did. We finally sorted it. Unbelievable performance. I mean, you know, there's a lot to lots to dissect there. No, well, he, he. I mean, look, he's playing himself first of all, right? So there's not much of a challenge there. And all right, he was a little wooden, but you know, he's. He, he sounds, would be, he sounds he? sincere, though, he doesn't he? He sounds sincere, you know, yeah. He sounds like he's done this before. Well, um, I, I just want to know how... To, I've got so many questions, really. Like, like so how has his agent sort of, like, broached... Like, I've well, got this... <laughs> <laughs> I know you're holding together the Invincibles at the minute, but I've got this thing on... It's called the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have been a man. How has that him. happened? I yeah, know. I don't know. I love the bill. I want to be. Yeah, yeah, the bill. You might just be a massive I mean, fan of it. I, I, I honestly, I didn't think it was terrible because no. I, I thought he was going to be playing like a, a hooligan or something, yeah. or something, and that would yeah. have been harder yeah. for him. But he was just playing himself. Playing himself. You know, I say like even in football as well, it's the same. Like you work all your life to be an overnight success, right? So you think like players <laughs> burst on the scene, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But like all that work that goes on beyond, you know your mum and dad or you know people taking you to football the same with acting right you cut yeah. your teeth on stage and plays whatever um, and then you know, for you where was your first kind of big break and obviously we, we're big fans of The Wire right so, yeah. but, uh, and, uh, big. honestly my big break was a TV show in England called Boot Street Band yeah. Yeah. and I was like yeah. it was a TV show it was yeah. a kids program 
I played a silly little role in it. I mean, I'm quite embarrassed. But at the time, it was massive for me. Like, I'm going to be on CBBC. Mm. What is it called? Mm. CBBC. Yeah. CBBC, yeah. yeah. And I've got a nice part. I'm getting paid. My mum and dad like, this is amazing. You know what I mean? And I was only about probably 19 or something like that. Mm. And it was a massive big break. Now, obviously, I had much bigger breaks that exposed me to the world. But that mm. was just like, wow, yeah. I'm, on, I'm on TV. I'm literally yeah, yeah. on TV. That you was the I mean? first pro contract. I guess. Yeah, no, do you know what? I was, yeah. I was just about to say for me, yeah, yeah. you know, like people ask me, what was your f most favourite goal? And it's one that no one can remember because it's like my first one for QPR against Gillingham. Mm. I remember exactly what, you know, it was a Tuesday night. We were two, we were two nil down. I chested one down and volleyed it in in front of, you know, it was 10,000 people. But I knew then that I was going to be a footballer, you know? Oh, so right, like right, it's goals right, right. that mean a lot like later down the line yeah, bigger yeah. games and stuff but that yeah. was the moment my dad said yeah. you're going to be a professional yeah. footballer when I got um, so I did enough the, the woman that um, runs Apple TV Plus mm. right the, the, the hijacks on her name's Jay Hunt and she was the commissioner that also brought me back to the UK to make Luther she worked at the BBC at the time mm. and she sent me a script and it was Luther and I remember my career was fine, you know, it was, I'd done String of Bell, but it was doing this, wasn't doing that. And I remember reading this show, it was a six part TV show on BBC in England. And everyone was like, Are you sure you want to go back home and do that? And I was like, this is going to be a life changer for me. And it did. Really? Lucy, yeah, oh, absolutely. Really? So do I you mean, know that by picking up a script or like just pick, like seeing things on paper, you can go, this is going to be big? Yeah. Wow. And yeah. that was Luffy talking about. Yeah. And that was yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got to pass some things as well. There must be ones that you've passed. Yeah. And then generally, is it the right call, would you say? Maybe the same with signings. Like, you know, you're passing certain opportunities with certain teams. You were talking about this yeah. Steve, last week. Yeah, it's a gut it's a gut thing, isn't it? You feel like it's a gut it's just, thing, yeah. Don't yeah. Know whether, some of them obviously nine times out of ten work out, but the mm. odd one you go, oh, yeah. was there one I'm show or there. film or something that you've seen go massive that you were you were sort of you had an eye on it. I was um, at the same time as Luther. I was offered a role in that show that uh, Lost. Mm. Wow! Oh, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. And it yeah, was going to yeah. be a season character. Yeah. And at the time, Lost was the biggest show yeah. in the world. Mm. But I remember thinking, mm, "No, nah, I'm all right. I'm going to go back to the UK, where it's going to be a smaller audience, but no one's seen." this character yeah. before mm. and that's how I knew you know you never got the bill though did you <laughs> I've been in the bill uh, oh you've been in the yeah. bill yeah you've been in the bill oh, yeah. I, mean, oh, I did get my episodes yeah. oh you did get my episodes <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been in the bill twice <laughs> okay so this next part of the podcast is sponsored by Brewdog so I think it's only right that we get the beers in there's a little barcode here that you can order from watch how quickly it happens Bam! Crouchy, the beers are here. Are they? Yeah. Oh, here he is. Look at the service here. Hello, bartender. There you go. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah. Very good. It's slightly unnerving. You look like my sister's husband a little bit. We're going to talk to the bartender right now. So we thought that the best way to to start the day today in our beers on our beer journey would be Punk IPA. So this is the beer that started Brewdog off 16 years ago. Um, so. What we've got here is an American style IPA. It comes in at 5.2%, so Ooh. relatively easy drinking. Easy there. Um, so what we're going to want to do, since it's got the best tactic here, we've got a nice and big juicy head on that. Ooh. And that's going to release all <laughs> the Notorious <laughs> SID loves a big loves juicy head. A little bit of aroma there going to be coming off the head there, all right? Look at that. Look. <laughs> wow. That is an absolute shambles. That because, is, because so you, it just proves, Chris just proves you can get it wrong when you're pouring. <laughs> do you know what? We'll, we'll get there. We've got a few attempts at this over the, the next few months. So, Do you not think this sort of way of pouring a pint, is there anything to be said for it? As in, when it make it more lively? Like, Well, that's what we're saying when we've got that big head on it. You're going to get an even bigger, punchier aroma. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pick up the glass and give it a little smell just now. If you look at it, like Chris has gone for the massive head. Yeah. Like, In all honesty, mine's probably the best poured there, I would you say? Or not? It's, it's, it's a, it's you a like tight call. You like He's eyeing mine up, isn't he? <laughs> Listen... I'm always gonna. I'm always gonna go say with you, Crouchy. I'm, yeah. I'm you know, big, big Spurs fan. Oh, that's all right. Thank you. you go. Chelsea in the corner is, there. Yeah. So, Do you know, you know what I see? Here? Different levels of finesse. Mm. Um, you see what I mean? Like mm. nice tight sort of finish up there from mm. Sid's. That looks great. 
Yours is a bit more kind of like it's done the job, but it's a bit more mm. uh, limbs ahoy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it's it's a it's fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So, so we've got punk IPS. So you're punk gonna talk IPS. us through this and tell us what we should be doing and all that. Yeah, so you guys have done this before. So it's gonna be a first time for you. Yeah. So what we're gonna do first of all, we're gonna smell the beer. Yep. Give a nice short sniff, like we like to call, exactly what it says on the tin. Is that one nostril or two? Oh, both. Get it right. I've only got one nostril, right it works. There. There's a yeah. full punch of this. Yeah. Big time. And, you know, the hops that we use, traditionally American hops, you know, the hop, it will always do better in warmer climates. That's why we, we like to take hops from America, um, around about the kind of Washington area. Yeah. Um, Can I ask what, uh, I don't, I don't, it's, it's always a question I hear, but like, it's always a, a phrase I hear, but hop, what is a hop? It's a plant, essentially. Okay, okay. Did you know that? <laughs> what a hop is or what? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a question that I knew I was going to look stupid at. But... <laughs> But you know what? Everybody talks in beer about, oh, it's nice and hoppy. Well, what, what is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, what is it? Saying. That's what I'm saying. So, so I'm digging deep. Every hop's going to give you something different in the beer. So as I say, we go for things that are going to give us like nice, citrusy, bright, punchy flavors. We mm. don't want something that's bland and boring because that's what this beer is all about. It's about yeah. there being more to beer than just run-of-the-mill lagers that you can find in any bar. Yeah. I mean, Sid started today with a pint of lager. Yeah. A good lager at that. Were you, disgusted? More to that. Were you disgusted with him or not? Do you know what? It's what I expected. Of, <laughs> to be Do you know what I like about you, though? I, just, I, I didn't want to go off the top board early doors. You know, it's like coming in and going down the slide early doors. <laughs> like some people around here. I think the um, God, I, th I, th I think it's the fact that you've come in bringing the beers, um, but then you've sat down with us and then explained everything. Mm. This was the first ever what you would say craft beer I ever had. This was the gateway beer for me. It sounds like you're like the absolute head honcho, top sommelier of brew dog beer. Would you be able to? be blindfolded and like sniff and taste and know what exactly what you're I'd give it a bloody good into. go. I've drunk a lot of beer. Yeah. Um, so I reckon I could give it a, a good go, a good solid go. he's got go. a pierced nose. Do you have to be trendy to drink IPA? No. Or can you be bog standard? This is, this is the beauty. <laughs> this is the beauty of this beer. You don't have to, you, you know, you... Any Chris, any a very legitimate question. Oh, any any Chris in the world can drink this beer and enjoy this beer. And as I say, it's a gateway one. Yeah. You know, we yeah. want as many people to enjoy our beers yeah. as possible. And it's the best way to start. Okay, okay. Like so non-trendies are invited. It's really good. Beer smell. is for everyone. Beer oh, I like have, it. This you know, is, it's, beer it's doesn't nice. have a gender or, or yeah. anything like that. Anyone and everyone yeah, I mean, can enjoy the beer. Got a beard. I haven't got a beard. No. Perhaps he's attempting. I couldn't. No. I couldn't grow a beard like, if I tried. If I think I think you'd look good with a beard. There is oh, yeah. something about it. Though. There is something about IPA oh, that get, does I bet smell. you get like a Bugsy Malone tap. I get like a little Maladi, like Aladdin, yeah. Aladdin little like this and this. Yeah. Nothing here. You never. Like, mine's, mine's, this is just grows like this. It grows like a goatee. But do you know if you I'm drink lacking. more IPA, does that help with your face? It's going to help. It's definitely going to help. Yeah. So I reckon. I reckon next time we see Sids, then you know we should at least give it a mm. give it a go. So one session on this, you can wake up tomorrow. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great by the end of this podcast if you've got a massive <laughs> fucking beard like off the back of it? Well, you know what? This is day one, right? I've rolled down the slide and come straight into a cold IPA. It's a yeah. great start. Well, it's, it's the punk IPA. Who would you say is the most punk footballer you've ever played with? I was thinking about this, you know. Who's that in a footballer? Yeah, you know what? I was thinking Stuart Pierce is banging Ooh, to his punk, yeah. punk music, you know. Yeah. Big Stranglers fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right, you know. And it, like, I yeah. think... He packs a punch as well. He does. He does. He certainly does. <laughs> he certainly does. <laughs> you know, didn't you have a shirt with Psycho on about? You, so, you the Pierce of your day? Yeah. Well, when I was about seven or eight, I absolutely idolised the guy. Uh, I still do in many ways. Mm. That penalty shootout, you know, the, the redemption on it. When he turns around and screams at the crowd, I think it's one of my favourite, if not, if not my favourite football moment ever. That's but yeah, cool. I used to be eight-year-old in an England shirt, number three on the back and Psycho written on there. Wow. That's what they called me, Psycho. But, so what, is he so, Psycho? I was Psycho. God, yeah, I imagine was, you were Psycho. I don't know if I was. If I'd, I'd be crossing the street if I saw you, honestly. Didn't, so, yeah. You had that though, So too. you had the shirt, I had the shorts. So I had the short scenario where, I mean, I was blessed with like footballers' legs. And Some my, my dad was like, we when I was growing up with a kit and everyone had the same kit, <clears throat> like our Sunday league team, black shorts, like quite long. And my dad would go, no, you're wearing knee shorts. They're shorter. Because it's like Stuart Pierce, big leg psycho. And I'm like, 
I'm only nine years old. <laughs> I've got these big, like, tree trunk legs walking around with the, the tightest 80s shorts. The old John Barnes yeah. and crown just, paints oh, ones. Yeah, exactly that. And I, I wanted to just be like the others and just wear like the baggy ones. No, no, you're wearing these shorts, son. Scares your position. <laughs> Do you know what? I was the exact opposite. Exactly. My dad was like, get some trousers on, son. <laughs> yeah, son, get these baggy slazengers on. <laughs> Did you, you used to fly into tackles as well, though, to be fair, didn't you? Yeah. 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 We well, still, so, still did, all, did all that through, never lost <laughs> yeah, that. No. Why don't we make this a thing? Why don't we open this out? So, um, today's beer, Punk IPA. Um, you've said Stuart Pierce. I'd agree with that. I think he's a legend. I don't know if we should get him on the podcast at some point. That'd be the dream for me. Uh, you know what? I'd like to discuss his music. My mate saw him once on the tube. Um, like, I can't remember where he was going to a gig, where He might have been the Stranglers or something. Yeah. But he loves, his, he loves his music, he loves that yeah. kind of music as well. So, He's the he's the punk man. Well, why don't we open yeah. this out and and let people say who who their who this beer would be in a footballer uh, for the, for this one? And then we'll mm. move on to other beers and so on and so forth. Yeah, because punk's like rock and roll as well, but it's like it's like yeah, but a bit you know, Eric Cantona, isn't it? Or, yeah, it's, the yeah. Canio. I don't like think that. it has to be like punk as in maybe like just music like, but like that maverick kind of maverick. Yeah, that's yeah. good. What about if uh, do we say what's the rules with this? You got to nominate a professional footballer, or can it be like if you're part of a team? You know, a bit like there's a parch in every team. Mm. Yeah. Should we Didn't, let people who's the yeah. punk in, in yeah, your I Sunday like league? Yeah. Do you know what? There's, never, there's never been a footballer who's actually been a proper like skin skin round the sides. Like you remember the old punks? Yeah. No, there's never been one, is there? Yeah. A punk is someone that goes like a wall for a couple of days, and there's, there's a plenty of there. <laughs> Paolo Di Canio, <laughs> Paolo Di Canio, Eric yeah. Cantona, that kind of. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, you might not have the Mohican or but. I remember the punkest thing I ever saw in a football park was in Aberdeen. And Nigel Pepper had just signed for Aberdeen from Bradford. And he came on for his debut and after 16 minutes, sent off. Yeah, Marco played Boogers. A played a suspension, came back on the park for his first game back. Six seconds, red card again. That was pretty punk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had that. I love that. Yeah. Have you I've, done? I've done that. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Psycho. The psycho. psycho. The psycho. <laughs> this is no, the short. No, 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 seriously, that's happened to me before. Uh, playing for Fulham. Got sent off against QPR. Free game ban. Comeback game, so Arsenal, 12 minutes in, Arteta, straight red card, got four game ban, missed the last seven games of the well, season. You did, uh, you really? did Arteta in no, yeah, I didn't mean to do it. Uh, I mean, I, and it was one of them ones Be where... Be honest. No, I didn't. I didn't. It was a bit rusty three weeks out. And uh, I tried to... You know the way you fake an injury? Where you're thinking, oh, is the yeah. ref going to like, change yeah, cards? Yeah, yellow instead. Yeah, oh, no, no, yeah. Straight red. Shit, you had a okay. lasting yeah. effect on Arteta. You know, he's, yeah. he's bottled everything since. Yeah. <laughs> you don't strike me as punk. like a true you know I mean? Spurs fan. Yeah, no, no. It was, but maybe yeah. you are a bit. Uncharacteristic. Well, biggest punk, Steve Stidwell. Well, it's okay. my nomination. Better that. Uh, <laughs> let us know. I'm going, to, I'm going to get this beard. Though. Are we doing the... So what are we saying? <laughs> Professional footballer or can it be anyone in their nominated Well, listen, you, know, you, you might have someone in your team, you know. Let who's us know. Got, you know, who's, yeah. who's proper, proper punk. Get involved. What should we do? Should we do emails on this? Should emails, videos, sent into our socials. Yeah. Get involved. Yeah, I think a good idea. If you do a video, if it's some, if it's not a professional footballer, if it's someone in your in your football team or your seven side, whatever it is, um, you do a little video so it kind of explains why they're mm. punk, why mm. they're this beer. What, what can we give them? Can we give? Can, can we give beer? some of the beers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you make part. us laugh or yeah. you know we're we're interested in what you say, email address peter.crouch at acast.com. Yeah, I think this is going to be big. We need to talk about Hijack. Yeah. Mm. It's on Apple TV. Yeah. Mm. It's great. Um, it's one of those that I do wonder if you can watch whilst you're on a plane. <laughs> you know, occasionally when you're, you're on a plane... <laughs> we definitely a good can't. point. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is a good point. I never thought about that. Yeah, you'd have to go... To, you'd have to see it. But like, they do... Home. They put <laughs> some of these on the plane, don't they? Like, do they? I've seen... Yeah, I've watched... What's the one where he lands it in the Hudson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched oh, that uh, airplane. Is, yeah. that, is it called is it Airplane? Called... No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah. no. There's one with Denzel. Oh, Denzel, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The one, is he? Yeah. Is he in, Where he saves it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, it, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it is available on planes. I do know that after I made that show now, when I sit on an airplane, I think <laughs> I know everyone. 
Yeah. yeah. Right, pilot, how you doing? You alright? Oh, you're the second pilot? Yeah, of course you are. Yeah. Your shift your shift's coming up, yeah. I know. <laughs> but I'd be confident if I s if I was on the same plane as you, I haven't seen hijack now. If I if I if I if you're next to Idris and shit goes down, yeah. it's all good, isn't to it? To be like, fair, I don't care what it doesn't you don't have to be on a plane. I think if I'm sitting yeah. next to you anyway, if yeah. shit goes down I think I think if you sit next to Idris, you're in first class or upper class, so uh, you're definitely doing all right, uh, mate. You're in that little oh, bit. I'll take that. I that should have been your roll crouchy just what? in first on the plane. <laughs> I'd have been happy with that. I'd have been better than fucking Manu Petit anyway. <laughs> Uh, how do you think you'd be in that scenario then on a plane? Yeah, how would you deal with a hijacking crouch? Well, I I got a feeling I'll be I'll be like AirPods in. I'll just get the face mask on and <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, just pretend to be asleep. Like, oh, okay, fucking no, is it over yet? It's fucking interest sorted out. Yeah, well. <laughs> it does get you thinking, though, doesn't it? Steve? It does. Yeah, I, I'd like yeah. to think I'd be a doer. Would do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think it, I think you've got. To, I think you've got to know your plan before. That's yeah. that's what this show's got me doing yeah, anyway. Yeah. It gets you thinking. What would so, you do? So, in what, that so you're a negotiator, yeah. right? Yeah. In, in, in the film. So, yeah. uh, but like business negotiator. A business negotiator. So he closes. Found in yeah, situation. Merges, yeah. And how, how, without telling you know too many people what happens. Yeah. So, so basically, you know, it's a flight from Dubai to London. Mm. It's a six, seven hour flight. Yeah. He gets on his flight. He's desperate to go home because his wife and he are going through a separation. She's found someone else and he's going home to try and one last shot. So, yeah. Gets on his flight and it all goes down. Mm. And he's just desperate to go home that his natural ability mm. to sort of negotiate kicks in. Now, but, but, but his job is basically, you know, Crouchy wants to buy your mm. business mm. and you want more money and, and he's not prepared to pay mm. for it. And my character mm. comes in and goes, all right, I don't know, hang about. I mean, come on, just give him a couple of quid. Look, he needs mm. it. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, no disrespect. No, no, no. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 this is very real life. Very real. I'll get out. I'll get out. We might need you after, actually. <laughs> You've absolutely nailed it. And whilst we're here, shall we, shall we begin the negotiation? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. <bro. laughs> <laughs> he's got on a plane and just go about. I'm going to pick at each everyone's weak weak spots, and and that's what he does. He's not like a broad. He's not like a fighter. Da 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 da. Mm. He's just thinking right out. All right, this guy looks weak. I'm going to have a chat with him and try and put him against that guy yeah. and figure out the mechanism of why they're doing this. All right, just so that he can land and get mm. home. Mm. And it's, a, it's a, I I love the character because he's not. He's just a smart guy. Mm. He's weak. He's not like, oh, I can fight. He's, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, my size is my size, but he's not using that. Mm. He's using his brain. And, mm. it's, and it's, it's really well written. Yeah. The mm. guy, George McKay, he wrote Lupin. Have you seen Lupin on no. Netflix? No. It's really good. It's yeah. about a thief. And it's the same writing team as that. Oh, okay. You know what's interesting about this one, though? It's like it's in real time. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. you know, I suppose you could actually put yourself in that position. That's why we did it, because obviously before, we're going, like, what would you actually be like? Because you feel like you're in it or yeah, on the plane. Absolutely. Yeah, you're spot great. on. It's uh, a bit like, um, I don't know, like I've got Flight Simulator on um, Oh, on you might have sharp about this. Flo. So you, what, did you talk about the one where you land them, that, that one? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, take, I'll set aside a couple of hours to fly. Yeah, you can get it on Xbox oh. as well. So I'll sit, I'll sit in my living room, TV in front, and you know, I'll do a normally just a quick one, um, Norfolk to Birmingham, that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> a joke one, a quick up and I'll down. Just do a quick Norfolk to Birmingham. <laughs> In real time, no. You in know real what I time. Mean? Yeah, and you can do your announcements if you want. I don't really go that far, but it's like you have a little <laughs> cup of tea there. Mrs. comes in, like cabin crew. It's great. Great fun. Seriously? Really? I've done, I've done that Mrs. Once comes well. in, like cabin <laughs> crew. So you, hold on, that, you, that's you, something yeah. else, mate, you're talking about. <laughs> mate, yeah, this is real she time, is it? She's got yeah. the uniform. Yeah. <laughs> it's <What>? just turbulent. <laughs> 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 But you're silly, you know what's going on? What's going on? Oh, wow. <laughs> what, what's you had me until oh, my missus yeah. comes in as a flight. That's why he's only doing Norfolk to Birmingham, though. <laughs> 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 I was going to say no long haul no long haul I'll just circle the runway <laughs> crash no landed no long haul oh that's funny oh. oh dear but I guess what you could do with hijack if you if you really wanted it's a bit like 24 back in the day where you could watch it and then because it was you, I mean you could do 24 
in a day, couldn't you? Yeah, and then yeah, the yeah. gaps in between, you can go for a piss or get some food or mm. whatever it is. But you can do it in real time. And that's what I really like about this is it, it like it is that real time feel to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's also an examination of what happens, you know, when a flight's hijacked, right? Each country has a very different policy of what it does. Some countries are like, right, hijack, shoot it down. Since 9 11, it's all very mm. different. And Dubai, coming from. You know the UAE to Europe, right? Is it's just one of these flight paths that you know it flies a few different countries. They have very different policies around mm. it, and it's an examination of that. So as well as it is this sort of time capsule on a plane, minute by minute, it's always it's also down there going, what are we going to do about this? And some countries have no tolerance for it, mm. and others countries are a bit more like you know. Mm. What, what are you like in general with negotiating? Are you, is that one of your like, fortes? Uh, what do you mean, Steve? I've, with I've, Apple? I've or with, uh, basically, I've got a BT sport contract. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in New York, so I wonder if I can just... <laughs> you imagine you come in with interest as your agent, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 just talk to my guy here. I have <laughs> to say, man, like, you know, I, I've had a 35-year career... Um, and I've just gotten a good sense of what is a good deal versus yeah. not, not a good deal. Mm. Not I'm not rich. I'm just, you know, well looked after and, and made sure that, you know, it sort of reflects the sort of work that I do. You know, um, with the DJ as well, I, uh, one similarity, I think, between you and the lads with this is like some of the venues that you get to play. And maybe is that one of the nice aspects of of the DJing is, is to kind of tick off iconic venues. Yeah. Because it's like you've sort of had them. Yeah, a bit yeah. like playing mm. in a stadium. It's like you're yeah. sort of... Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 It's like christening yeah, yeah, it almost. Yeah, yeah, like that, of course. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's a buzz. I mean, you must be obviously passionate about music. Where's that all come from? I think my parents, my yeah. dad, my dad's um, big music collector. My uncle uh, was a DJ when I was growing up, a wedding DJ, and mm. I used to run around with mm. him, going to different weddings. Um, and as as as, far, as long as back as I can remember, I've collected records. You know what I mean? Like Brilliant. I've got a picture of me four years old, holding a Marvin Gaye "Let's Get It On" album. Wow. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like, yeah. and, and so I've always loved music. And now I do it to your point. You know, to tick boxes off. I did Coachella twice. I've done Glastonbury. <clears throat> I saw you awesome. in Ibiza with. Um, so, because I used to be on Radio One, and Danny sings your praises. He's always, oh, you know, he's got so guy. much respect for you. Um, but I saw you do a back to back with Pete Tong, and it <laughs> yeah. was fucking. Where's this? Oh, oh, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 And then we just did Miami. I did Pete Tong again. And Pete, honestly, shout out to Pete Tong because, you know, uh, I don't know if you felt this, but, you know, as you, you have a career change, you're doing something mm. different from what people know you for there's a lot of skepticism yeah, right yeah. so i'm not sure if you've met presenters have mm. gone oh what crouchy oh, okay what you got a podcast now yeah. yeah but a lot of djs were like what you're djing idris mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right and pete tong always embraced me always love showed that, me love yeah. you know what i mean and and i've, I've been djing since i was 14 so but he just respected that I was doing like it. You've been DJing a long time since 14. And then you said that earlier on that you get a little bit nervous before. Like, so exactly the same as us in games. You get a little bit nervous, a little, little, little bit anxious. As soon as it starts, yeah. you're in the flow, mm. you're in the swing. Yeah. Like, why is that? Why, like, is that just because the venue where you're at? Or is that just because you want it to be sort of perfect? Or <sighs> I think the nerves is about, you know, um, not wanting to let people down. Especially like, like I liked you as Lufa. What are you doing here? I came to party uh, yeah, and you're yeah, yeah. shit. I, I would oh, hate that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would hate that yeah. feeling. And I've, I've, we've all had clangers. We've all had bad games. We've all had yeah, bad, bad gigs bad, as bad well. It's yeah. part, part of being a DJ. It's not all part the Instagram good ones. You but know? for me... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that 10 yeah. seconds when you had, they had yeah. the hands in the yeah, air yeah, and the rest right. of it was also flat all your mates you, know, you get booked for every one of your mates weddings as yeah. well you know that's a thing it's hard to say no it is hard <laughs> to say no it it is, is, yeah. Yeah. but yeah I, I've always just enjoyed the feeling of you know getting it right yeah. and you know that's a, you know it's like mm. when you've got one song and everyone's going for it mm. and then you mix it into another one and they're going for that as well that is magic yeah. Yeah. that is mm. magic well, but what's your favourite gig, do you reckon? What's been the one that really sticks out to you? Probably Coachella, actually. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, big. The that. first Coachella gig I did. Wow. Actually, the last one as well was pretty bonkers, but the the first one where everyone thought, ah, oh, DJ. In America, they didn't know I was DJ as much as mm -hmm. here, and when I came out and I smashed them in the head. <laughs> <laughs> what's your first song? What, what's <clears throat> Usually, 
I don't have a first song, no, one first song, but it's usually something that just really hard and just goes in. It's Set the equivalent the of elbows, you know, you've got to let yeah. them know in the Set first the five. Yeah. You've got to let them know. Yeah. Yeah, you you let, you know. Your, yeah, yeah. let that, them know you're there. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Well, it yeah. used to be, not so much yeah. anymore. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's raking the Achilles down the back. Just <laughs> let them know straight away. That's the thing, you know, the first one, like in the air with your centre half, like you, it's like your first battle. It's old school, but it's like, you know, go and win the first header, go win the first tackle. It's like sets the tone. Yeah. Have you ever had a, another footballer like like do a skills trick on you and make you look silly? Uh, yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Who is it? Who is uh, it? Well, the thing is, I, I was, I was you know, centre forward, but um, you know, quite often you, you wouldn't you wouldn't dive in too much on the players you knew, like Cristiano Ronaldo, players like that. You, mm. you, you obviously, Sid would probably come up against him more than I would, but I've come up against him and he could make you look silly, you know. Mm. So you don't often Carnu. We talk about yeah. Carnu, obviously, he was um, we, on the last pod. What a play! You wouldn't because you wouldn't go near him too much. You just yeah. did because you didn't want to get embarrassed. Yeah, get yeah. embarrassed. Just give him time and space. And yeah. just, but, but would you have revenge for the rest of the game then? Trying oh, to like, yeah. well, not there. Next, like, they're in the book. Like next game, next <laughs> season. Sid's had a little notebook. Five years. Yeah, there's a book. There's a, there's a book. <laughs> it's an open there's book. There's a book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ronaldo. Nutmeg. Yeah. Ticked off. Done. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's great. That's the difference with your world. Is you could um, like ex it sort of exact some revenge. Do you yeah. know what I mean? There's not many jobs you can do. You can't yeah, do like, that in acting, can you? Someone's sort no, of I mean, fucked you off or taken a, a role or something. You can't really... No, but you get actors that will try and make you look silly in a scene, for sure. Oh, How do they do yeah. that, though? Well, Shithousery, the acting world. Acting housery. Ooh, yeah. Wow. yeah, like, basically, you'll get a, like, a scene where if the camera's on them, they'll give you all the tears and all that. And then they turn around and they're just reading them to you. And you're going, mm. fucking what are you oh, doing? Oh, so you know, you can sort of tell that they're doing it to make yeah, you they've look done a bit it on silly. their close up. They've not done it when it's your close up, mm. and then you just, they're just basically reading it. And some actors be like, "Sorry, I just got to go to the toilet. Can someone else read the lines?" And that's happened. Uh, and I put them down in the book. Uh, Scene yeah, housery. Yeah, that yeah. is. It doesn't happen very often. A little bit of you know, parched with the big as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you must have that actually. Yeah, and um, parched. We, we talk about people being parched a lot. It's it's um it's like sucking up. It's right. a bit. Yeah. Um, dead, but yeah, so there's a source. Uh, Derived from someone that never ate a drank a, a drink of water became pop because all you'd always be talking to the manager. Mm. So you must have actors around the director, like all the time. You know, yeah. you must. Yeah. There's a lot of parts. Like so you go right, he's parched, 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 right? Parched. <laughs> Thirsty. He's thirsty. Well, he, didn't have a, he didn't have a drink for the whole pre-season. Yeah. Too, too, too busy talking to the manager or the director. <laughs> you know, he's talking to the manager. I, mean, the... I like that. Yeah. Well, there must be who's the biggest parched in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, I've got cool names now, don't I? No. Uh, well, um, well, you can, you... I don't know. Yeah, honest. yeah. Okay. I really don't know. Well, there must be a few out there. You know, around the directors as well, because it's a cutthroat business. It's well, like are you in that industry? Jeremy. Are you quite parched? Nah. No. I, I, but I like talking to everyone. Yeah. Like, I'm very much into the crew because they're the ones that got to film. Yeah. And, you know, if you've ever been on a film set and the crew's fallen asleep, man, you know you've got problems there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because if you've got the crew engaged, they're the guys that are not trying to, they just want to make sure. Mm. You're good. It's good. And if they're entertained, then you know you're on the yeah, winner. Yeah. If they're like, mm. then yeah. you, you got problems. Do, do you know my first gig? My first television gig was uh, I did the World Cup in India, in Mumbai, for Indian TV. And I thought, right, well, I'll go out there and sort of you know, none of my mates or people. I'll, I'll just go and cut my you know cut my yeah. cloth out there a little yeah, yeah. bit and you know try and do that. And I went out there and said, right, this one. <laughs> fucking about hundred, you know, there's fucking a billion people watching you today, right? <laughs> well, I was trying to go, I was going, let's get out of the way. <laughs> anyway, I'm on there and uh, they, obviously the games were like two, three o'clock in the morning. So the crew, everyone fast asleep on the, on the thing, like that, right? And I'm sitting there, it's my first gig and I'm going, right, we're live in 30 seconds to a billion people, right, in India to do the World Cup and everyone's asleep. And all right, and the kids count down now, 20 seconds, like 90, and then they bang, they're slowly getting up and up and up, and then just back, just turn the cameras on. I'm fucking, what wow. is going on? Jeez. It's honestly, that's it's acting. the maddest, maddest thing I've ever. Idris did the World Cup draw, didn't you? I did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in in uh, Qatar. I mean, fuck that's that's massive. That's massive. That was massive for me. I just got to ask you one question. No, so you're a Londoner, right? Yes. Like, obviously, lot, a lot of the stuff you do now is in the US, and I know you were out there from an early age. How do you find that kind of being there and being here and how do you find being um, out there? I mean, growing up, I was always like, I wanted to get to the States because it was the biggest market. All the movie stars came mm. from there and the greatest films came from there. And I just thought, 
you know, getting onto that ladder would mean that I was getting somewhere. And I did 15, 16 years there, loved it. I don't regret a word of it, a, d- a day of it. But when I came home to England, I felt a lot more um, closer to my essence. That's mm. who I was. I just remember, oh, I remember paving the streets trying to be someone and now I'm back home. And so I, I, I still make a lot of films out in America. And, and I wanted to say, you know, America's craftsmanship is incredible. Mm. England's up there as well you know and it's like that and so you go to america you know the actors the 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 film the directors they're very very good very good Mm. top class but come home it's just different with crews they you know it's a little bit more banter Mm. i've worked i work with crews that i've worked i've done films with over the years so you see them again you see Mm. their children their son or their daughters in it now and it's just a slightly different fabric have you got a star out there yet hollywood star yeah no not yet not yet. No, no, no. no. There's one in Hackney, and now they said I've got a name. I haven't put it laid down yet, but wow, Ooh. that's the cool. Hackney War Hall of Fame. You that's said it needs, that's where it needs to begin, and then you know that that mm. could be the new and the new new trend. You said obviously you moved like from L.A., New York, Miami. Where was your favorite place when you was when you was out in, in the uh, U.S.? Where did you enjoy the most? New York and Miami. Miami yeah. was. Bet Miami's fun. Hot tamales, mm. mate. I got, <laughs> I, got, I got into a lot of trouble, though. <laughs> Crouchy, do you want to explain Crouchfest as well? So oh, just yeah, yeah, whilst yeah. we've got it. about Crouchella. Um, might one as well of throw the, the One of the biggest um, things you did. Well, we did, uh, it, was, it was originally called Crouchella. And um, we, we took it We took it to uh, the O2 Indigo uh, first. Um, but it's called Crouchfest now. I don't, if you're not across it, we'd love you to come down if you'd like to. Uh, but yeah, we've had, we've had it was a big event. We did we did Wembley Arena last. What we did Wembley Arena, yeah. 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 Was, so was it, do you have good. bands or what yeah. do you have? Yeah, we what? basically just we we go on stage and we chat. We have guests, but we've had some. We've had some Paul Potts did Ness and Dormont, which was off the scale. We had Kasabian played. Really. Um, yeah, I mean, we had Catherine Jenkins, we had Liam Gallagher. Yeah. Uh, oh, amazing. Yeah, it's a big old event. It's, 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 yeah. it's, good, uh, it's a good event. It's a sellout yeah. event. <clears throat> um, Talking about uh, 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 Kasabian, do you know Serge is a decent player? Yeah, he's a good yeah. player. Mm. He's a very good player. Yeah, he's a friend of the pod. So, um, oh, is he? yeah, we've seen him. He's been on a few times and obviously performed for us at Crouchfest. Mm. Oh, he's a good, lovely good fella. footballer. Lovely so it's, fella. it's, it's not a no. Mm. To to uh, for headline and DJ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's got straight in my headline. Straight in. Well, the no, head, I'd have idea of headlining, when, but if you want to be an understudy, <laughs> you, yeah. I, I I say we take this rap battle thing on the road. <laughs> yeah, at all. It, <laughs> <Imagine> <laughs> <that>. <laughs> it's on. Yeah, let me get working now. We need to wrap this up somehow. Well, I tell you what. Okay, let's rather than it. put him on the spot, why don't we do a rap game? Yeah. Okay. Right, where basically you say a line and the last word of what he says yeah. you rhyme with and it goes round mm-hmm. and we just oh. and the first person to mess it up is out. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Well, uh, yeah. Pressure. Do you wanna pressure. start? Do you wanna start the line? No, I think it's better you start. Go to go from Notorious the to start. Yeah. Well he knows what he's doing at least. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so so we start from me, yeah. yeah. Start, D- start. Dummy round, dummy round. Dummy round, yeah. So when he when he ends with sorry, last question. This is like when, he, when, you, when you say house, do I start with mouse or do I at the end? Do no, I no, no, no. Rhyme it. So you're going like, like, like I'm not saying house, and then I'll go like, all right, I'm small as a mouse. But no stuttering, just got to come out. Yeah. All right, great. Go, go. I'm with I Dizzle, and my name is Notorious Sid. Yep, you're out. Everything. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, okay. I've got it now. Okay, go again. Okay, I think you should do it. No, dummy round. Okay, right, ready. So you've got to rhyme with D. Do the same one. Okay. So P T. Yeah, whatever. I'm with I Dizzle. My name is Notorious Sid. I am big and tall. My name is Crouchy P. I'm sitting on a couch, having a drink. I need to go toilet so I can have a fucking pee. One of our team has blocked it already. <laughs> it's something you don't want to see. <laughs> he should have locked the door with a big key. <laughs> oh, I went in there uh, and put me on my knees. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, who could have done that? Well, who could it be? <laughs> but I'd like to assure everyone it wasn't fucking me. <laughs> Nice. Good. That's good. That's a good way to end. Well, we. Uh, <laughs> right. yeah. He's still Drop rapping. the mic. <laughs> 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 shocking. Shocking. Absolutely shocking.
All right. Well, well, uh, Idris, thank you so much for oh, coming Idris, on the pod mate. today. It's been a good laugh. Had an amazing time. Thanks very much. Good luck with Hijack, mate. It's an absolute pleasure. I'll see you at the fest. Yes. Yeah. Love that. Well, that was incredible. Incredible. Uh, ending on a rap battle or wherever that was. It was oh, like well, a... I didn't really get the game. I never really got it. It was between Sids and Idris that they just hit it off. They're just rappers. <laughs> you know, they're just rappers. So they just hit it off. I thought it was a fun game. Uh, I thought he was amazing. Do you know what? I only ever see really short interviews with him and uh, he always comes across well, but it was good to hang out, have a beer, um, spend a bit of time with him. Yeah. All sorts covered there. I mean, he was totally chill, wasn't he? Relaxed. Yeah. I think the start, the opening was set the tone. The opening, I mean, I mean <laughs> yeah. since his rap at the start. I mean, like, yeah. what what got me about that is like, obviously, you don't, I don't think you really see him kind of in that environment I much. Agree, you know, yeah. like, I felt like we really opened up. And I don't know, I mean, maybe it's because we hit him with, with a hell of a lot at that start there. Yeah. <laughs> it was a whirlwind for him. Yeah, if you're a journalist listening to this podcast, you've just, you've just won the lottery, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> if you are... <laughs> I mean, you are. It's all sorts covered. There's a lot going on. At one point, you talk about what you'd do in a hijack. <laughs> yeah. I liked it, actually. I did, I did like that. Just yeah. recline. Just recline there. Just recline. Pretend it's not happening. Please, if you're a journalist, come up with some inventive headlines. Tag us in and I'll make sure we retweet. Because there was some absolute gold in that. Mm. It really was. But you know what? We said we get into the messages. and then we... I, I just need to update you quickly on Luke. Uh, Luke's receiving the Jose Enrique shoes and we've promised him a Jose Enrique experiences. You know what it's like, Steve. You've been a Premier League player. We're going to take him behind the velvet rope. We're going to take <laughs> him where places where you can't go if you're, you know, not a Premier League player. Um, jo the Jose Enrique full experience. Yeah. Um, Luke's going to get that. We just need an update to whether he's received the shoes or not. Yeah, yeah so we're sending him the shoes. Um, so he'll be dressed at, at least in the shoes of Enrique. We've asked that you wear white trousers as well to complete He seems it. keen. Wow. That, yeah. And then we've got the Ted Lasso top, which yeah. everyone's going to absolutely That's fucking love. Just try not to get it stolen. Um, my, only, my only worry is, you know, the lady's going to be all over him in that. that so they are. And you know where outfit. they're going to end up? Yeah, yeah, well, you know. We've said we're going to book a suite in the local hotel of any three-star hotel in the area. It's got, us. it's got success rate written all over it. And uh, and maybe a word from Enrique. Uh, as long as we get all the clobber back, it'd be nice. For if we get the clobber back, you can have your own video message from Jose Enrique. <laughs> Congratulating <laughs> you <laughs> on, a, on a completed night as himself. <laughs> I've, said, I've, said I, I've said I'll get you that, but I don't know because I haven't asked him, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. A couple of messages. Yeah. Uh, Notorious, do you want to go first? Okay, message from Andrew. Every year we have an incredible, intense fantasy football draft league, which we keep entertaining by adding in different fine measures. Example, if your player gets yellow carded, you owe 50p. The winner of the league wins £200, and then we go on to a random excursion with the rest of the fine money. Anyway, it transpires that this year's winner, let's call him Carl, has been found guilty of transferring out his players with the person who's finished sixth. In return for monetary gains, it's making me sick even typing this. Nobody battered an eyelid until we decided to do a random check on who made the best transfers throughout the year. Little did we know that these two cheats had been in collusion throughout the entire season. We as a committee have held a formal disciplinary and both have been found Guilty. Wow. That's no no word on what the sentence is there. Well, the maybe we should verdict. make that up for them. Uh, Collusion as well. What a, what a word. Well, what I would say is there's, there's a lot of money in this. There's big rewards. Well, it's for a the 200 winner. quid winner there. Well, that's yeah. what I mean. They're supping out his entire team. That... They're not mucking about with the money. So what I mean is if the if the carrot is big, the stick needs to be bigger, mm. in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, but are you going financial? We should. I, think, I feel like we should embarrass him. Yeah. Rather than... Oh yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not asked. I'm not asked. Yeah, no, he so, should. He should yeah. be. He should be embarrassed. But to the tune of that amount, mate, it should be equivalent value in some sort of moral punishment. Mm. Um, if they're friends as well, that's poor. If it's a work, if, even it's if it's in a work of them place. as well, so you need something where they can't just uh, enjoy the experience together. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It needs to be. Mm. What could? It well, let's say, well, what are they like? They might be fans of a certain club. Maybe they have to go. Um, to a game of that club in a rival shirt. If they're a Tottenham fan, they have to go and wear an Arsenal shirt to that game. Do you know what I would like to see introduced? The shame bell, like on Game of Thrones. Mm. I think they should both have to walk through the streets 
Um, mm. With someone ringing a bell next to him, ideally <laughs> Hannah Waddingham. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, nice. I only found out she did that role recently, uh, which uh, unless yeah. I'm mistaken, but um, amazing. I, I'd love us to book right, Hannah yeah, Waddingham walk, for a shame procession. Walk through yeah. the town centre uh, in an outfit of the lads' choice. Yeah, of the, yeah, of, the, of, the, yeah. of that league's choice. Each each person has to wear an outfit. Nothing arrestable. Just behind someone with a bell and they have to say the word shame for at least five minutes. Yeah. Yes. That's and bad. Um, yeah, obviously we can't encourage people to throw shit at them or anything. No, like no, that, no. We no. don't want to do that. It's um, not, but, you know. but I think it's more just the video of the shame bell. I think that will... I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> but at all times their heads have to be hung. Yes. Just through the streets. <laughs> through the streets. Um, but... Also, it should be an outfit. We probably can't. Yeah, it needs to be an outfit. It needs to be dressed like a chicken or Mike Dean or something. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. be creative, but be legal. Be creative, which is probably what the slogan should be. For be, that is, <laughs> be creative, but be legal. <laughs> <laughs> that goes to Crouchfest as well, by the way. Yeah. Well, I got a message here from Gareth. Uh, he says, "Has Chris seen the Barbecue Showdown program on Netflix? I'd highly recommend watching this. I love it. Also, do you think Chris?" That you would beat an American in a barbecue off. I've seen loads of these, Chris. Wow. Have you like it's been yeah. a lot of people on my social media flooding them with this barbecue show on Netflix. Yeah, are you I'm across it? I've not seen it yet, but you're right. We're getting a lot of um, a lot of messages about this. So, shall I watch this and report back in the next podcast? Or? Yeah, please, because yeah. I, I, obviously I won't. I won't be. I've got to say, obviously, <laughs> the last time I was on the pod you mentioned about the barbecue yeah. and then I think it was a day after or two days after that you put the videos up on your Instagram of the marinade and yeah. then it was in this is where this is going to go you blew my mind yeah mm. so you're, it you're was, nibbling are you it was off the charts yeah. like, <laughs> it does look nice like, it, that, it's nice, like it's, it's, you, it's, the problem is here you're stubborn Pete so what you've done is you've gone oh you bum you cunt oh, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> say it like that and actually Actually, I know you want it. No, I, no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to smoke for eight hours. You, you do. Know I, mean? I don't want to. I don't. You actually to. do. This is the mad thing about it. You I actually want to smoke do. for eight hours. I don't want to do that. What? But the tourist wants to come. When you doesn't didn't say he wanted to come. He just said it looked nice. As I'm saying, Wait, notorious. If I sorted you a decent barbecue in your garden, right? You'd have me over for the day to come um, smoke yeah, with you, right? A million percent. Right. Uh, what I'm am not I saying I don't want to come over. I, I'd love to. I, if you invite me to a barbecue, I'd be so. Fuck happy. off! You'd come. I'd be so. You wouldn't come. I love a barbecue. You've barbecue's never come around my house. My barbecue barbecues are a, a big part of my life. I love them on a hot day. I just don't like smoking for it. No, hours. you love I don't shit like barbecues. the pretentiousness you're, of the you're, shitey barbecue. You know, but you're the guy that goes, "Oh, we're gonna have a barbecue today. Bring all the family and friends around, all that." And the last thing you think about is the barbecue. You'll yeah. go piss around in your pool. Or, or like <laughs> stupid games in your massive garden. <laughs> Whereas actually, you've, what you've done is you've invited people around for a barbecue, but no one thinks about it. And then all of a sudden you go, oh, fuck, I've got to cook the food. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, then, so then true, you put yeah. the burgers and the yeah. sausages on, Very you true. start stressing. Then you go, oh, I'll take a photo so I can send it to Chris and show that I, I'm doing a barbecue, I'm having a shit time. That's because you haven't no, prioritised the thing I you've invited people over you're for. You're getting this wrong. I've got, I'm having a great time. No, Do you know I am? Because I'm socialising with my friends. Tell you who garden. isn't. Your wife. You're cooking shit food. <laughs> well, no. your, your missus is having a great time. She's got eight hours away from you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I cook her. I'll, I'll come no, around it's, your barbecue. It's, it's all about... It's all, no, no, it's all about the prep. Like a good friend of mine, Bobby, oh, he no, does jerk chicken. Friend. He does jerk chicken. <laughs> and it's the prep that goes into this, right? Because when you taste it and you go, yeah. that is delicious. Yeah. It's the eight hours before. It's the eight hours before. I just don't think I've got that much passion. You watch. I, I bet passion. you this is going to make you really jealous, right? I'm going to send you a photo. Me and Steve, it's going to be, it's going to be about 11 o'clock at night and we're going to be rubbing our meat. And you're going to be going... And I'm going to send you a photo and I'm just going to be looking at the camera. Serious, I'll like serious face. I'll be disgusted. I'm going to look at it and I'm not even going to smile. I'm going to know you're going to be really triggered oh, by yeah, it. I am going to be. I'll be like, Sizzy fucking didn't turn up for golf today. Yeah. I'm rubbing meat with Chris. Where were you last night? It's rubbing Where meat with Starkey. Like? No, I'll be dis I'll be disgusted. I'd rather uh, have you cheated on me. I'm going. <laughs> I mean it though. We'll come back to this because I tell you what, don't let him dampen your interest in barbecue. No, if let's you see what you it, started there, Gareth. You want to do Fucking it? You're recording a rift in friendships and everything. No, I'll tell you what, if you want to do it, Sid, like I'll be uh, me and you. 
and we'll we'll go do that just one day and I've always said, Pete, that what the if you want to come get involved, you're welcome to. Well, I'm, I'm not invited. Like I would, I'd like, love you to come around my house. I would you'd love, never, I would love never, to come. But this is bollocks because you'll never. When come did you? My house. Have, you have you invited me? What's to your the house? point? Would you come around my house? Come your house, your house. You'll would come, you actually? If you did that, what you did on on that barbecue, it looked sensational. The company's good. I just don't want to stand there for eight hours. I'm not going to. Are you doing eight hours like beforehand? I'm not going to stand there for eight hours if you're no, not going to lie. No, I'll tell you what. Right, so I'll I'll prepare the food the yeah, night before, yeah. right? So you don't have yeah, to be there. Right. But what I will say is, I want you to treat like a golf day. I want you there at sort of six, seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we start nice and early. <laughs> wow. I want you to, I want you to be excited. So this, is what, this is what I can't <laughs> no, understand. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. Not rubbing me at six in the morning. <laughs> no, but I would have rubbed it the night before. What I'm All saying right. is we'll just, we'll get that on yeah. and we'll just start. So and what I'll, do we do? Just watch it cook and yeah, talk. Yeah, I'll make us a nice, I'll make us a nice breakfast. Just, <laughs> just. Oh, mate, I'm out now. I'm out. No, you're not. I am, what mate. I'm not doing that. Turn... Okay, let's move on from this. But very quickly, what time would you turn up? What? Just get like an all barbecue day, like a midday shout. No, no. Midday. No, but then I've done it all by then, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> hope so. well, you've, just, you've become, you've become expectant that people will just do everything for you. This no, 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 wow. no. You've got it wrong because I can still have the same barbecue, same fun, and cook the meat in half an hour. I can have the exact same fun. Wow. Let us know where you stand on this. Uh, you know, if, you, Gareth, if you're listening to this, that. like, what, who's right? <laughs> and also, um, what should we do? I actually think what we should do is try both. Like, I think you should do something that means a lot to me, barbecue in one day, and I'll do something in exchange for you. Okay, all right. Fuck knows what that is, yeah. but it's, like, it's, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> we sort it out. Got to say, I've really enjoyed uh, doing it from in here. Um, podcast that is yeah a lot of fun if this is the future home then phew, you've nailed it well yeah well we're yeah. squatting for now aren't we but it's we'll see uh, how we go we can, I don't, no one really comes in here anyway I've, I've been here before no one's been in there so I think we just keep lagging it for as long as we can yeah <laughs> as we said I mean we're just doing this in a sort of little room at the back there is a window so um, I guess as people realise we're here um, you might want to come along and say hi, which is cool. Just come down the slide, come say hello. Also, I think this is quite cool. So what we're thinking of doing at the end of June, we're going to be hosting a, a punk pub quiz in the pub here. Um, so uh, we're only going to do this if there's demand for it. So if you'd like to come join us, you can think of it like a mini crouch fest. If that sounds of interest, you do have to do a bit of admin though. Shall I explain that? Yeah, go on, mate. Yeah. Okay, to be entered into the draw for a pair of tickets, all you need to do is go to brewdog.com forward slash crouch. Use crouch15 at checkout, which is Crouch's old shirt number, and you can get yourself a crate of punk IPA. If you get yourself a crate of punk IPA, or if you get the alcohol-free punk IPA, then you could be in with a chance of getting two tickets to come down to the quiz. <laughs> there is a rule with the quiz, as always, no calls. And of course, terms and conditions apply, which is quite a Carl thing to say, but they do. So um, if you fancy giving that a go and you're buying beer anyway, combine the two. That's what we're saying. If you're thinking of buying some beer, you fancy coming to the quiz, buy the beer from there, use the discount code, 15% off, you might be able to come to the quiz. Bosh. Boom.